This video was sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Previously on Building a Treeless Treehouse, Jason came up with a design for a treehouse without a tree. And then to take it one step further, he cut down trees. So there wasn't even a chance of putting it in a tree. Then him and Craig mapped out on the ground with some strings and a tape measure and some stakes where it was going to go. And they used some marking paint to pretend like they knew what they were doing. Then, because they were lazy and didn't want to dig holes themselves, Jason rented a skid steer with an 18-inch auger. But he made Ivor drive it for him because he didn't know how. And they dug a bunch of 18-inch holes for footings. Well, they were 18 inches wide and about 4 feet deep. Once they were dug, Jason filled the bottom with about a foot to a foot and a half of gravel, and he made Craig tamp it down with his feet. Then he got some sauna tubing and crawled through it to make sure there wasn't any blockages. Then he had craft time in the shop building some cool things out of rebar, and he stuck his head down in the bottom of a hole. It was a low point for him. Pretty soon, some guys in a big concrete truck showed up and offered to pour concrete into the holes that they already dug. So, they did that. Filled up every hole with concrete, and Jason made Ivor do all the grunt work to get it all nice and level. With the footings all poured, Jason made a border around the entire structure with old railroad ties and ordered a buttload of wood chips so that he could make it look just like a playground, which he did. Again, that was last week on Building a Treeless Treehouse. Now on to this week. Alright, now if last week I didn't know what I was doing pouring these footings, this week I really don't know what I'm doing, and that's to start making this thing go vertical. Now the first thing we needed to do was add these Simpson Strong Ties so that we could anchor our post into our concrete footings. I believe these are the Simpson Strong Tie ABU66Z. The Z stands for dimensional lumber. I don't know why it's a Z and not a D, but you can also get a 66R and that's for rough cut lumber. Basically because our posts are dimensional, they're not a true six by six, they're five and a half by five and a half. So we have to use the Z, where if you were using rough cut lumber, it'd be a true six by six, so you'd use the R. But that's more information than you need to know about these strong ties. The point is we used them. But before we could anchor them down to our footings, I had to map out exactly where they needed to land according to my SketchUp drawing. And I also had to make sure everything was nice and square. So I started by just taping a string line on top of one row of footings and marking where I wanted each footing to land prospectively in line with my SketchUp drawing. And then I did the same thing over on the other side so that I basically had two parallel lines. It's not hard to get two parallel lines because you just measure the distance in between both lines at each end and you know they're parallel. The trick is getting four lines that are perfectly square to one another. So that took a little finagling and some measuring diagonally from corner to corner, but I was able to get a nice square box eventually made out of string so that I knew I could land all of my little strong tie anchor thingamawatsits in place and that my structure would be square. Now that I had the line square, I could use this kind of crosshair that it created on the footing to land dead center where I wanted the center of my post tie to land. Then I just marked the center of each remaining metal bracket on all the other footings. I just used a Sharpie. I don't know what else you're supposed to use to mark concrete. I mean, Sharpie worked just fine, so that's what I did. Then to make sure that my brackets themselves would sit square to one another, I measured the middle of each bracket and I added a little sharpie mark. Now I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but it worked. Then I could lay the bracket down on my string line and make sure that those marks were on the string on all four sides. This made sure that my bracket was perfectly square. Then I traced out the outline of the bracket, again using the Sharpie marker, so that I would know exactly where the brackets needed to go once I added my anchor bolts. See? Nice little outline, so I should be able to plop them back in place and know that they're all square. All I had to do was just go around from footing to footing and trace them all out, and I should be good to go. 
Next, I'm gonna use these wedge anchors. You basically drill a hole right in the middle and you're gonna hammer in this little concrete wedge anchor. It's got a little sliding wedge, so it'll go in, but it won't come back out. And to drill these holes, I just happen to have this Milwaukee hammer drill and it actually worked perfectly. Drilling through this concrete was like butter. It even had this little stop thing on the side, so I knew exactly how deep to drill. At least, I thought I knew exactly how deep to drill. I ended up not drilling this one deep enough, and you'll see why that's a problem here in just a second, but I can fix it, don't worry. After drilling my hole, next I needed to clean the hole out and get rid of all the dust and debris. So I used this little hole brush that was next to all the concrete stuff at the big box store. And it actually worked pretty good to wiggle all that dust out from inside that hole. Next, I used some Simpson Strong Tie concrete adhesive to set these little anchors in. And I took a sledgehammer and I started pounding that thing in. Now, if you did this right, you should just get a little squeeze out of that adhesive right at the base of the anchor. Then you just put your post base on there and you use the little square washer that it came with to hold it nice and snug. I also used the washer from the concrete anchor because I like to overkill things. And I used a socket to really tighten that nut down. Now this is where I made a mistake. This little plate is supposed to sit on top and it's supposed to give a one inch gap from the base of your footing to the base of your post so that the post never sits in water and rots but because I didn't drill my hole deep enough, it wouldn't sit flush, so I had to cut that first bolt off. But for the rest of them, I adjusted my drill and made sure that I was drilling my hole just a little bit deeper, and it worked great from that point on. And in no time, I managed to get all these post bases securely in place, and we were almost ready to go vertical. And when I say almost ready, I mean after I drilled 13 more holes. There's a lot of them. The next morning, Craig showed up and I was happy to have his help. Now to attach these posts to the post brace, it's pretty simple. We just set it in place and then I had Craig throw a level on both sides just to kind of get it close. There's still gonna be a little give. And then there's holes in the post brace for a 10 penny nail. So I just hammered a few nails to hold the post generally where it needed to go and make sure it wouldn't fall over and kill Craig or I. And then I came back with a half inch drill bit. I drilled halfway through on one side and halfway through on the other side in both the top and bottom hole. And then I took some big beefy half inch bolts and I hammered them all the way through. This really anchors that post to the post brace, which is anchored to the footing, and it keeps it from going anywhere. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the right size bolts, so these ones are a little longer than they needed to be, but that's okay. We'll trim them down with the sawzall when we're all done. After we hammered both bolts through the bottom of the post, we slid on our washers, put on our nuts, and tightened them down. And then, like I said, we trimmed off the excess with the sawzall. So nobody would catch an ankle on it and blame me for it later. And then if you've hooked one pole down, I mean, it's pretty much the same story for the remaining poles. You just slide them in place, hook them in with a few nails to keep them from falling over. We eventually just hooked all the poles in with nails and then came back through and drilled them out. That way we could get a little rhythm to our madness. And it was nice because I didn't even have to carry the posts. I made Craig do that. I mean, that's what employees are for, right? doing all the stuff you don't want to. I'm just kidding, we took turns every other because these six by six posts were friggin' heavy. And Craig didn't even help me line this one up. Here I am struggling by myself and oh, there, now he decides to help. Thanks a lot, buddy. Glad you got my back. Pretty soon we had all of our posts in place and secured down with those post bases and it was time to start building the framing for our decking and different levels of the treeless treehouse. By this time, Craig had gone home. Apparently, he's got certain hours that he works during the day, and once he reaches those hours, he's out of there. But that's a story for a different time. My family, however, was around to lend a hand where I needed it. So I started cutting pieces of pressure-treated 2x10s, and I just tacked them on with a few nails just to hold them in place. While I did that, Ivor took the socket set and he tightened his ear bolts. Apparently, this child has ear bolts that need tightening every once in a while. I always knew he was built in a factory somewhere. 
And after he was done with that, he was ready to give a little happy dance in front of the camera while I wondered if I was doing things correctly. Man, isn't it super obvious by the way he dances that both of his parents are extremely white? I'm sorry, buddy. We did the best we could. Now, the first level of deck framing was the trickiest to get in place because the posts still had a little give to them, but my wife was nice enough to kind of lean on them here or there while I just tacked them in with the nail gun. And when she went in to cook dinner, Ivor took over. He wasn't as happy to help, but I reminded him that I was building this all for his enjoyment, and if he didn't help, well, he was dead to me. So that's how the first evening progressed. Just a lot of cutting and attaching pieces to my posts. Now, again, let me stress, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never constructed anything on this scale in my entire life. I don't know the first thing about engineering and physics and whether this is gonna be a strong design or not. So I tried to just go a little overboard with the amount of wood I'm putting into this thing. And hopefully it'll be strong enough that it won't kill anybody. After I got a border around my posts, I then added the Simpson Strong Tie Joist Hangers. I just used a little off-cut piece to make sure they were lined up good on one side. And then I came back through and I marked for some carriage bolts. My idea was to sandwich all the posts in between two 2x10s and hold those nice and secure with some carriage bolts. And then I'll use lag bolts on the outer pieces. So after marking out where all my carriage bolts needed to go, I got a 5 8 inch drill bit and I drilled all the way through both 2x10s and the post and hammered in these beefy 5 8 inch galvanized carriage bolts. Then I secured them on the back side with a washer and a nut to make sure they wouldn't go anywhere. It was kind of fun hammering these big carriage bolts through the post. Kind of felt like I was working on the railroad all the live long days. Once I got all my bolts in place, I started cutting my joists. Now I put the joist hangers just on one side so I could slide them in and hold them on that end. And then I just kind of used a nail to secure them nice and flush with my outside border on the other end. Then once they were right where I wanted them, I came back in and installed the joist hangers on that side. And I just kept going back and forth like this until pretty soon I had all my joists in place. They were nice and level, everything was even. And then I just had to hammer in literally a million nails per joist hanger. Gosh, this takes a while, but it does make you feel like a real carpenter, swinging a hammer over and over again. The next morning, this is as far as we'd gotten on day one. We had my lower deck done, and now it was time to start working on the upper deck of our little tower. Fortunately, Craig was back and ready to help. What didn't help was the fact that it was about 101 degrees outside this day, and it was only 8.30 in the morning, and we were already sweating but hey, I've been meaning to lose a little weight for a while, and if anything's gonna help, this is. Now we had this idea to attach some two by fours to our posts at the height that we wanted our second deck to sit at, and then we could just rest our second deck pieces on the two by fours. But we didn't think through this very well, and we put them on the outside, and our inside pieces, well, they didn't reach to the two by four, so they actually did nothing. So we just held them in place, made sure they were right where we wanted, and we temporarily tacked them on with the nail gun. I was pretty happy with the framing part. It actually went really quick, just cutting everything with the skill saw. Craig was up on the ladder, I'd hand him parts and pieces, I'd climb up on my ladder, he'd hold one side, I'd tack things in, we'd put a level across everything to make sure that everything was level to itself. Finally, our 2x4s worked out for our other pieces, so at least they weren't a total loss. And once we got all the pieces for the perimeter of the upper piece done, we added all of our carriage bolts and lag bolts to really lock everything in nice and tight. However, at this point, my drill I was using to drill the holes pooped out. But when one drill fails, just go get a bigger drill. So I grabbed this Makita drill that's a beast out of my shop and it didn't complain at all about drilling those 5 8 inch holes. So I set to work drilling more holes and tapping in more bolts. 
Now, when we were pouring our concrete footings, I felt like we got them all pretty accurate. And, well, they were all pretty close except for this one that winded up being way off. But I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, right? Having it right on the edge? It's in the back and nobody will be able to tell. Oops. Anyways, with all of the framing done for the decks on our little tower, it was time to start working on the framing for our main structure. This is going to be the one that the house of the treeless treehouse actually sits on top. There's going to be a lower deck, an upper deck, and eventually, hopefully, a treehouse. So we built this exactly the same way as we did the little guys. Cutting all of our pressure treated lumber to size with a skill saw and tacking everything in place just temporarily with the nail gun. After it was held in place, we of course came back, measured, drilled out for our carriage bolts and our lag bolts. I gotta tell you, when we first started with the whole bolt thing, it seemed like a lot of fun. You know, drilling holes and then hammering in these bolts, it was satisfying. But after doing it for a day and a half, I started to get pretty tired of drilling these giant holes in pressure treated timber. It was not fun and my muscles were starting to ache having to push that drill in and pull it out every time. But I guess this is what real work feels like and everybody should do it at least once in their life. This is my penance. I just kept telling myself it's all going to be worth it in the end when I have a treehouse that I can play in. Well, and Ivor can play in sometimes when I feel like letting him. Well, hey there, guys. This video is sponsored yet again by one of our favorite sponsors, and that is Squarespace. And the reason I love Squarespace is because we use Squarespace. What a coincidence. Ever since I started my very first business when I was a kid selling cherries, I used Squarespace. That's a lie. The internet wasn't around yet. But when I was older and needed to build a website, Squarespace made it incredibly easy. You can get on and you don't even have to know anything about building websites. They make it so simple to build a professional looking website on your own with all the crazy tools that you want and need. Come check this out, I'll show you what's up. So this is our website. It's crazy simple, but that's the way I like it because it's easy to use. Squarespace makes it so easy to add all the products you want. So if you click on our goods page, it lists all of our products and you can have unlimited products. If I want a million products in here, sure, why not? Put a million products in there. And the other cool thing is that you don't just have to have physical products, it also allows you to do digital downloads. So we have our entire plans library, easy to click on, and they get sent right to your inbox. The other thing I love about Squarespace is it's mobile optimized. So the website looks great on a computer, but you switch to your phone and it looks just as good, super simple to navigate. You can have it on your phone, your computer, your tablet, whatever the heck you want. We can buy our domains right through Squarespace. We can get mailing lists and send out newsletters. I mean, it's all right here at our fingertips. So here's what you're going to want to do. If you're looking for an easy way to make a professional looking website, just go to squarespace.com slash bourbon moth woodworking and get 10% off your own website or domain when you use the coupon code bourbon moth woodworking. And if you can't remember any of that, all of it's down in the video description below. Just click that link and have fun. Build a website. Become a millionaire. You do you. So we were almost done with all the deck framing on the main structure when the hardwood center showed up with a whole load of lumber for us. Now this is going to be all the decking for all the different levels as well as the floor for the treehouse and some plywood that's eventually going to be sheathing on the side of the house itself. We unloaded everything in a GIF and then it was back to the real task of now starting to frame the upper portion of the main structure. And this was going to be a little more difficult because this one's going to have a cantilever deck that hangs off the front. So we're using 16 foot runs of pressure treated timber from the back all the way to the front. We did however manage to get our 2x4 little supports on the correct way this time. So all we needed to do was grab a 16 foot piece, measure from the back to about 12 feet. That was the distance of our posts. So that way we can attach the piece on the back to the post, make sure the post lines up with our mark on the front, and the rest is gonna be overhang for the cantilever deck. Then we each had a ladder. We just walked the piece up, 
set them on top of our 2x4 bracing, which we had already pre-leveled out so we knew our boards would be perfectly level, and once again just tacked everything in place with the nail gun. Once we got the back of the board tacked on, I came to the front and Craig pushed it to the correct place right on our line and we tacked that one in place and then all we had to do was measure the distance between both posts, make sure that other post was both level and an equal distance from the front to the back and we secured that with a few nails. Once we got pieces on both outside posts, we decided to hook the back brace on. This way we'd have something to kind of butt all of our joists into and make sure they were all even across the back. So we hooked that one on the back and we just kept throwing in these 16 foot brace pieces, sandwiching those posts in between, and hopefully this will be nice and strong but probably not as strong as the smell that was coming off me after working all day in 100 degree heat. At the end of day two, I was pretty disgusting. The next morning I came out and it was time to actually secure everything in place with our bolts. So I started drilling holes and Craig started hammering in those bolts. Once all of our bolts were in place, we put on our little front deck piece. Now this is going to have joists attached to it that run all the way to the back so I decided to hook this on with structural screws. Each screw is weighted for like 600 pounds and we put a ton of them in there so hopefully it'll be okay. Next we started adding more joist hangers up on the top and started sliding in our joists from front to back. This is actually pretty fun and satisfying and went pretty darn quick. We just had to cut them all the length and plop them in place. You know I love a good plopping. The most difficult part was just climbing the ladder in unison to get them up and into those joist hangers. But hey, at least it was 100 degrees outside, so it was fun. All right, I promise I'll stop complaining about the heat. Did I mention it was freaking hot outside? In no time, we managed to get all of our joists on the upper deck in place, and we even added some blocking right at the front where it was going to transition from building to deck overhang. And then probably the most satisfying thing was to go around with the saza and chop off all the excess on our posts. I thought about cutting these all to length before we put them up, but then I thought it'd be much easier to get everything level with a little extra room to work with, and I could just come back and chop them off later. So I did. And I finished up the following morning. I tried to beat the heat. It was 6 o'clock and I was out there working and it was still about 85 degrees. You just can't win, can you? The next morning, Craig was gone and it was back to me working all by my lonesome. But fortunately, all I had left to do on the actual framing was the joists on the lower deck. So after getting all my joist hangers in place, I just cut all my joists to size and it only took me about 10 minutes to slide them all into place. And then probably another hour to go back and add the million nails per joist hanger that is required to secure them. But I was wearing a tool belt and that made me feel like a real construction worker. So that was an added bonus. Next, it was time to start laying our decking. Now for the decking, I'm gonna use this New Zealand pine. This stuff is vertical grain and it's vacuum sealed with the finish and antimicrobials and anti-rot and all this stuff. So it's supposed to last for flipping ever. All I had to do was put it down on my framing. So I grabbed a couple of my Rockler quick clamps. I love these clamps for situations like this where I only have one set of hands. Clamped it in place and started marking things out. So I just marked where my posts were with a pencil and a square and I cut out that shape with the jigsaw and I slid my first piece on there. Then to secure my first piece, I drove screws directly through the top right into that outside framing piece. These are going to be visible screws, but there was really no way to avoid this with the deck fastening system I'm using. And that system is this little camo drill drive hidden fastener system. It's this cool little tool that clamps onto each deck board. There's an angled port on both sides so you can slide in a screw on each side and it drills the screw at an angle so that it's in the side of the board and not the top. So it essentially gives a seamless look on the top of your deck without all those exposed fasteners where water can collect in the individual holes and eventually rust out and you get a discolored deck. 
The one downside, however, to this hidden fastener system is that it takes a while to install. It didn't help that, like an idiot, I decided to go with the thinner deck boards instead of the thicker ones because I thought it looked cooler, which just meant more boards I had to lay down. Iber helped for a while, and then he also said, this is taken too long, Dad. You do it yourself. So away I went, putting my little drill guide thing on, every single joist, putting two screws in, back and forth and back and forth, and in no time I had like four boards done. Eventually I got the whole lower level decked just in time for all the neighborhood children to come over and bombard my ladder and try and kill me apparently. But all I had to do was start telling them all the details of this New Zealand pine decking and they got bored and went home. And then it was just me and nature trying to deck this upper level one board at a time as the clouds rolled in and I wondered if it was going to rain. I kind of got in this weird zen-like state where I didn't even realize I was working anymore. It was just me and the boards and nature. One board became two boards. Two boards became eight boards. Eight boards became 12 boards. And pretty soon, I was exhausted like really hot and sweaty and gross and ready for a break. I gotta tell you, I hand it to the guys that do this literally every day. You are heroes. By far the most satisfying part of the decking was when I came back and cut everything evenly to length with the track saw. I purposely just ran them long because I knew I could zip zap zoop it at the very end and boy, is that not satisfying or what? I just didn't have a long enough track to do it all in one run. I mean, that would have been a little too satisfying. You just can't have too much of a good thing, so I had to do it in three separate sections, but dang, that looks pretty nice and clean. Now, because decking is somewhat boring and it's literally the same thing over and over and over again, I'm not gonna make you watch me do the rest of the decking on this project. Just know, while you're at home eating your potato chips and watching TV, I'm still out here, installing decking, one board at a time. Hey, what's up? I hope you guys enjoyed that video. As you can see, we're going vertical. If you follow along, the next video, there'll probably be some more done, and then the next video, there'll be some more done, and eventually we're gonna finish this thing, so just stick with it. I think next week we might be working on stairs, so I'm gonna do an entire video on building a staircase, so that's applicable to more than just a treehouse. If you haven't done so, go over to our Patreon website. There's a link down in the description. Sign up for that. You're missing out on a ton of extra content, behind the scenes footage, live question and answer every Monday. So check that out. There's also links to all the different products and tools we used in the entire thing. There's a link to the website with all my merchandise, so go check out down there I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get down there not the same down there where you guys are clicking links but literally I need to get down there Iver <laughs>